You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul notes that the story of Jacob and his sons in the Bible continued through the story of the scriptural Jacob, or Israel. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. Just to make things simpler on us, I mean, it's very clear, I think it doesn't need extra comments in this sense. Let me repeat. It's Simeon and Levi. Simeon is the one who's supposed to be hearing and thus listening to the teaching of God, his will. Levi is the father or grandfather of the priesthood in other words the two people who were supposed to keep the law of God remember how in the prophetic books we have an attack against the priests and the leaders and the wise men and the elders and so the choice of names is again very important which doesn't make sense in the English because in the English you have three people Dina had two brothers that's how the the first one was named Jim and the other was named Harrison but you can't you can't relay scripture in this way let's jump to the parable of the Good Samaritan the story is that that person was a Samaritan. It's written and repeated in the story. You cannot say there was a man. And in this chapter the names are very important. And what is funny is that this Shechem is obviously representative of the city Shechem very clearly you know it ends up later in the book of kings and the prophets as being the city of false religion or liturgical service here again you see how things are interconnected this is the place where you betray God and his teaching okay given all that I believe we can just keep it that way a couple of comments which are of importance because they are stressed in verse 13 we have the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and his father Hamer deceitfully because he had defiled their sister Dina so the author is underscoring that their intention was deception in verse 13 Bemirma in deceit with deceit now the interesting thing about that is that it is the same expression that was earlier used to speak about Jacob 
mishandling his brother Esau in order to steal the blessing of Isaac. In 2735 we hear your brother came with guile and he has taken away your blessing. So deceitfully and with guile obviously you can say they have the same meaning and so on but you're not going to capture immediately the connection the way you would do in Hebrew because in Hebrew you have the same thing Yomer Ba Ahika Bemirma Isaac is speaking to Esau and said to him your brother came in deceit deceitfully Bemirma and if you keep this in mind then this chapter becomes interesting in the sense that Jacob is presented as having learned his lesson but still his children are committing the same kind of sin he committed and that is a preparation or a reminder or whatever of Ezekiel is that you know the children are no better than their fathers one more time I'm inviting my hearer to really get to know the text as much as possible in the original even if they have to take notes and so on to check for themselves if they can find it at least they will be convinced every time they hear me making connections by giving me at the beginning the benefit of the doubt and slowly on by being convinced that they should dump theology once and for good and it's a classic here when you hear theologians especially women they keep repeating you know a rape is a rape is a rape a rape well, no one is saying that it was not a rape but that's not the story it's the author that controls the story and today it's getting more and more difficult because in the news all over the place people throw at you this my narrative your narrative okay that was the author's narrative but I have my take on my narrative and then you have the story between the GOP and the Democrats and so on my narrative your narrative about the masks and the COVID and it is and it is not the trouble is that this means why should you read scripture unfortunately for you it turned so that it became a major piece of literature in the Western civilization and you're stuck with it like when you do crossword puzzles who doesn't know Eden and Abel and Cain and Nineveh and so on but <laughs> but to say Nineveh doesn't mean you are reading the book of Jonah and this is terrible because that's what you have with Jerusalem lately I didn't watch it because I would have been sickened you know a great program on CNN by a famous actor about Jerusalem the city of faith and blood and the wars about Jerusalem but this is a human history how people perceived and did and fought and a bunch of Europeans who considered that Jerusalem was their city can you imagine a Canadian allowing you to say that Ottawa is American you know you can do that but everything is allowed to the powerful of Europe and North America technically as such they are not worse than other people 
but the other people do not disturb me as much because they don't use scripture Japanese and Chinese they don't use my scripture so that's fine I can talk with them but someone using the words of life of the scriptural God to make them whenever that person decides words of destruction for the others as we keep saying is not allowed and I think in this regard these two chapters 33 and 34 would be very good for us to really comment on them now to push a little further and show you how this Mirma which is used with Jacob stealing the blessing and with his children working against the Shechemites is important because it looks ahead towards the prophetic accusations against the people which means that the story of Jacob and his sons continued through the scriptural Jacob or Israel let me have just hear you a couple of texts both of them are actually taken from Jeremiah the first one is in Jeremiah chapter 5 23 to 31 but this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart they have turned aside and gone away they do not say in their hearts let us fear the Lord our God who gives the rain in its season the autumn rain and so on your iniquities have turned these away and your sins have kept good from you for wicked men are found among my people they lured like fowlers lying in wait they set a trap they catch men like a basket full of birds their houses are full of treachery mirma that's the word therefore they have become great and rich and so on and so forth and then in 29 shall I not punish them for these things says the Lord and shall I not avenge myself on a nature such as this well this verse 29 is precisely the action that Jacob is telling his sons that the Lord will have against them because we have mishandled his covenant of circumcision in 9 5 to 7 we have again this Mirma repeated and the first time interestingly deceit upon deceit and then deceitfully let's read it chapter 9 5 to 7 heaping oppression upon oppression and deceit upon deceit Mirma Bemirma they refuse to know me says the Lord therefore thus says the Lord of hosts behold I will refine them and test them for what else can I do because of my people their tongue is a deadly arrow it speaks deceitfully in Hebrew mirma di ber it speaks deceit exactly as Genesis 34 with his mouth each speaks peaceably to his neighbor but in his heart he plans an ambush for him you could hear that Jeremiah is describing Genesis 34 shall I not punish them for these things says the Lord and shall I not avenge myself on an angel such like this again a repetition of what we heard in chapter 5 I believe this additional comment is very interesting due to the centrality of that noun deceit mirma which again connects the story 
of Simeon and Levi with that of Jacob earlier in his story with Esau and the blessing. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.